So what we are going to be uh, focusing on today is a few slides, hopefully 20 minutes of slides, and then a demo, big demo, 20 minutes showing the different parts of the framework. And these are the, the main areas we will be touching today. So first, uh, in the beginning, there was nothing. Uh, there were tools for uh, information discovery, uh, such as port scan, vulnerability scanners, uh, tools for exploiting uh, uh, exploit repositories, Metasploit, tools for uh, reporting uh, every company or every group had their own way of uh, creating a specific template or using whatever tool to do like a custom uh, uh, tailored uh, uh, report. So what about sharing the information that you need before you get to any real hack or any real uh, result? Uh, on the other hand, you may think uh, that is something that it's not really needed, but there are a number of scenarios where you uh, require that kind of thing. For instance, it is not uncommon that some of the people in the team is in the office, some of the people in the team is around the world. I'm talking here uh, about uh, security professionals, but uh, the tool is also useful for other groups of people that want to collaborate or do some security-related stuff uh, online, uh, VPN, or uh, in whatever means. So uh, security professionals is uh, one people can benefit from, from the framework, but uh, there is a broader audience, definitely. So all, in other instances, you are asked to go to a warehouse where there is no, no way to call back to the mother house, so you cannot have a system uh, or you cannot depend on something that is in the office or something that is in your home if you can't really get into that. So uh, you will need something to take with you when you are uh, disconnected offline. And also sometimes, and this is more for security professionals, uh, the scheduling is not so clear or so clean and you don't know what you are going to be doing uh, next week or the next day. So uh, probably the best way of uh, bringing people up to speed uh, half the way through an assessment or half the way through a review is to have a central repository of information where everybody can go there, check out what everybody else has done in the past few days and, and just avoid overlapping doing stuff that has already been done. So uh, the Dradis project, what were the goals? Uh, we will be talking about the technology behind the scenes, uh, things that have happened since 2007, which is when it started, and also why we are calling it the Dradis framework. So project goals uh, for easy goals, uh, it's uh, share information effectively. Uh, we want a tool that just enables that. We want like a bucket where we can put all the information in. Everybody can contribute information and then hopefully we will we'll be able to get something useful out of that. Uh, easy to use and adopt because otherwise the people uh, just won't go for it. Uh, we know that everybody has their own way of doing things and unless we provide like something that it's really flexible and it's really uh, easy to use, then they, they won't bother and they will still be using their own tools or, or their, their custom uh, method for doing it. Uh, about flexibility, uh, Dradi's core or the core of the framework is just about holding information and then you can extend that in as many ways as you want. We will see how you can extend that to get some uh, uh, information from tool output into the system or to how to generate reports or how to get information from, say, like a vulnerability database that you may have in your environments, how to feed that data uh, into the framework. Also, uh, as we mentioned before, sometimes you go offline and you need to something small and portable that you can take with you, uh, so it doesn't require uh, big infrastructure. Uh, it is done in Ruby. Uh, for the server-side component, uh, we are using the Rails framework, which is quite powerful and gives us uh, both a web services interface using REST and a standard web interface. Backend database is whatever you want. Uh, by default, it's SQLite, so uh, you can also port that. On the client-side components, you have also uh, Ruby, Ruby uh, clients. Uh, there is a console client and a graphical interface. Uh, that you can use to feed information in. And 
actually uh, the, the way it's going to work is every team will have uh, one server or one, uh, probably it's going to be the team lead that it's holding the information and then uh, the other members of the team will be contributing into that server. So uh, since 2007, uh, we've been quite active uh, and since the release of the 2.0 uh, version in um, February this year, uh, we are getting uh, some traction. There are lots of people using it and, and we are getting also contribution from like uh, groups and companies also around the world. Uh, this is a view of downloads from SourceForge. Uh, that February is our, our highest ever of a thousand downloads, and it's getting uh, from the beginning in 2007. I think uh, we started in, in summer and we published in in SourceForge in uh, late December, I think. And and we are getting we are getting uh, there. So why 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 radis? Think that. I Radis, I hope that uh, most of you know, it's uh, one of the systems that they have in a sci-fi series called Battlestar Galactica. And uh, for them, it's like the radar system they have. Uh, they don't have uh, uh, windows they can look through, and, and this is the way they get the information in for when they are getting attacked or whatever. Uh, if you don't know, the Battlestar is about robots chasing humans in the space. So, <laughs> so they need to know when the robots are coming, and uh, the only way they have to do that, or they rely on this system called Radis to know when they are being chased. And uh, I think that the real metaphor is that everybody is just, wait a second. So that is what it's called Radis in, in the series, and if you see it, there are some other screens all, of, all over the place that have Radius. Uh, so the idea is that uh, when something happens, when, and I believe it's about to happen, everybody know uh, where to look at. Yeah, there you have it. So the robots are here, and everybody is just, <laughs> and everybody is looking at the screens, and 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 everybody is relying on. Everybody knows where the information is and where to get. Uh, uh, really the, the latest information available. So that goes for what is wide radius. And uh, so really fast, what the, an overview of the framework. Uh, what are the uh, things that you can do with the framework? How can you extend the framework with plugins? And what is uh, this new component we have created called the meta server? So um, radius is uh, a bucket of where you can put the information. So one source of information will be uh, the team feeding information into the system. Then you can have uh, some tools that will feed also information into the system. Uh, we have plugins that will parse this, uh, the output of these tools and just uh, dump it into the system. Also, it's not exactly the same, but you can have other uh, systems in your environment that can feed information in. Uh, say you have a repository of vulnerabilities in a wiki or in a vulnerability database, so you can also get that information in. And ideally, you will produce uh, some sort of report, some sort of, of result. And this matches uh, the three different types of plugins that we have. This, uh, the first type would be the upload plugin, so you can upload a file, a file and get the information out. This would be the import plugins, where you can import information from a different source, and also the export plugins. How do the plugins work? Uh, we are following uh, one of the rails uh, ways of doing things, which is convention over configuration. So you can put your code, it is in Ruby, so you can put your code uh, in Ruby, and the only thing you need to do is just include it in the right place. So you w would have created the Nmap upload plugin, and you include it inside plugins and upload, or if it's export or import, you do the same. Uh, also, to make things easier, uh, there is a, a helper script to generate uh, every type of plugin. So you can uh, script generate upload plugin, export plugin, or import plugin, and then that will create all the code you need. And it will also create the include line, so you only focus on your business code. 
And finally, what the meta server is. The meta server is something that we've been looking at from the very beginning because, uh, okay, <laughs> first, uh, um, when we thought about the meta server, we thought this is going to be cool because it's the way that we are going to be able to uh, manage different projects and, and to get some something out of that. So also keeping in mind that uh, Dradi's main goal, or one of the goals, was to be portable and uh, usable offline, but there is sometimes a need for multi-project management, and that is what the meta server is. So uh, in, again, in the office context, you will have different, different teams doing different things. It will make sense to have all those projects centralized in, in, in a single location. Again, this is this can be applied not only for the, for the office environment, but first for yourself. If you are contributing with different groups, then you can, uh, uh, it, it can make sense for your own reference to have a central repository. And also if you want, I know that some people is using this, for instance, to keep like an historic notes. So whenever they find something interesting, they add that to their own Dradis repository, so if, for future reference. So that is uh, uh, one of the main uh, things you can do with Meta Server, which is uh, archive your projects and uh, get them for future reference. If you are in a company, say you test something, the client com comes back in a year or six months and says, give me a retest, then you can pull the project down, see all the problems, not just the report, but all the evidence, all, all the false positives that you, everything you checked, go through that and, and, and retest. More things you can do with that is if you have everything in a central place, just easier to back up and possibly do some intelligence over it. Uh, uh, you will be able to do, provide uh, um, or to find out if something is getting better, if something is getting worse, how many issues you found that time, if the number of issues is increasing, decreasing. Possibly there are some other um, business stats that you can get or business intelligence related stuff that you can get out of the, the central project repository. So uh, that was it for the slides and let me show you the tool. This is how it looked like. Uh, as I said, you have um, a web interface. Let me try to make that. I don't know if it will scale that good, but it seems like it. So the idea is that you will have uh, on the left hand side, um, you put your information there, you structure it in like a tree, and you can add different, as many levels as you want, and you can structure, because also different people want to structure it different ways. And from one project to the next one, uh, it doesn't make sense to enforce like a given structure, so it's just a tree, and you can add leaves and nodes wherever you want. And then on the right hand, hand side here, you have different things. You have nodes, uh, import, and attachments. Let's go through that. Uh, for instance, I have here a few nodes. Uh, a node, let me make that a little slow. So a node, a node has this concept of different fields. So that would have a title field and a risk field and then uh, some other fields that would be interesting for uh, whenever we want to create a report or if you want to get something out of the node, uh, you can get it from the different fields. Then the import node, uh, it's uh, the hook for the different import plugins. In that case, uh, we can try to use this uh, vulnerability database plugin and run a third search. I have here, sorry, a different application in tab three. Uh, which is a vulnerability database. And I can, uh, I have created a plugin to connect uh, Redis to the vulnerability database, and I can run a query on uh, sessions, and it will give me all the results that I have, uh, all the matches in, in the database. And then I can have uh, import that into my current node, and uh, in doing that, I can save potentially uh, some time. So other things you can do is, for instance, here, you can generate a report. Uh, in order uh, for a report to be generated, let, yeah, it has to be in the, in the right category. In this case, uh, we are going to generate a word report. So uh, 
we do it like that or not here you generate the report and you can download the report and open it with uh, open office or office or whatever and another thing uh, that we have seen is that uh, in order for the people to use this kind of tool, uh, you will have uh, to have an easy way of uh, passing templates to the tool. So uh, I created this sample template. It's just a Word document. And I wanted to show you how easy you can convert any Word document into a template for, for the framework. So this is basically uh, just a standard document. And the only thing I have done is here create some custom properties for the document. So I have title, risk, uh, you can see it very well, but title, risk, description, and recommendation. And what I'm going to use, what I'm going to do is uh, use those fields uh, as placeholders for the information on my database. So here I will insert the um, title and the um, a risk. And I have a different field, which is the um, affected host. These fields match the information I have in the nodes in the database. And it's, the framework is agnostic to this. So you can choose the set of fields that you want. You uh, input the fields in the database. And then you tell Word to put the placeholders here. And here, uh, this, because this was just an example, I have two issues. I will only need one. And here I will have, again, the risk. the issue description, and the issue recommendation. And so now if you click on any of these, you see that they are standard uh, custom properties. You get the gray thing. Ah, also here the title, sorry. So the, the last thing you need to do is uh, use this developer tool, uh, which, is as, which will associate the Dradis schema to, to the report. And then uh, you can select the different sections on the report. That would be the first section. And you s just select the thing, the uh, slice of the section that you want to repeat for every node. In this case, we, uh, we want a new row for every node. So that would be your template. And for the second section, that would be the second section, and we want to repeat this a little bit. So with that, uh, we have uh, generated the report. We save it as a Word XML and call it template. And only with that and only using Word, uh, we have gone from uh, a document to a template that we can use here right now. And I don't think that you need to refresh this. So if we generate the report and save it in this last temp, the folder. What's going on? Maybe you need to trust me on that one, but um, it will generate the report using the template we have already or we have just created. I'll give it one more shot and just let go.
Yep. So uh, that is the template. We have one row for each of the issues, and all the fields are filled in. So that goes for the export plugins. And um, what else do we have here? We have note attachments, uh, which is uh, quite useful if you have a screenshot or whatever and you want to uh, add, that, add that and send it so everybody else in the team can have a look at it. And the last thing uh, that I wanted to show you is the import uh, set of plugins. Uh, we have a few of them. Say you import an ASUS file from uh, in XML format. It will parse the file, add it to the repository, and then here it is. And it, it has also created some uh, fields out of the Nessus output. So that is also potentially quite interesting. And that is what it goes for the standalone server. And what I was telling you before is this uh, multi-project approach or multi-project component called the meta server where you will have uh, your different projects, each one with a revision. Uh, when you, uh, you can create a new project and uh, check out a revision from the repository or you can um, just create a, a new project altogether. For instance, if we export it uh, and commit it to the meta server, once that is sent, we will have a new project here for everybody to use and then you can edit the properties and just call it just the DEF CON project. And from now on, the next, the next time you, uh, you initialize your Dradi server, you can check out a component, check out a revision or uh, start a new one. And I think that's, that's about it. Uh, the last thing uh, we added last week was uh, quite interesting and it may have more use uh, in the future, it's, uh, we have created a hook with email, so you can send emails that, and the content of the email will be added to the repository database. So if we try that, uh, I, have a, I have here a filter that will detect a Dradis note email, and just some uh, test text. You can also maybe uh, add an attachment Um, just send it. Takes a while. So uh, I have a hook in my email in my email server that will send the information to the client to the to the repository. And once it is here, because I also uh, have this hook in my my own account. So that one it's here. So it should be already there. So here are my email notes with some header information and uh, the test text. Also, if you go to the attachments section, you will see the attachment that, that has been sent. Um, I think that's, that's almost everything I wanted to, to show you today. Uh, uh, one other maybe interesting thing is in the project export, you can create uh, templates or you can save the full project. You can save it like for a local copy or whatever, but templates would be interesting. Say for instance, if you want to follow a specific methodology, you can create the template for like web applications and save that and every time that you have to use uh, or to have to test a web application, then you can load the template and, and know uh, the steps that you need to follow. And I think that that is all for the demo. And just thanks for, for being here. Thanks for the people that have contributed here. Uh, some guys from MWR and Daniel and, and Siebert uh, also spin but contributed the Nessus module. And some people from S21SEC in Spain also contributed. And what's, what's the call for action here? It's just give it a shot and, and see if it works for you. See if you can uh, get something useful out of that. Let us know if there is something missing that you can, that we can do for you or that we can do that will make you or that will make it work for you. And channels to do that is the website. There is a, a community, there is a forum for that 
there is also, and um, we are setting up the IRC channel. And also, if you want to send me an email instead of the mailing list, that, that also works. So that's all for my side. Unless there are any questions, yes? It does work with OpenOffice. It generates a report in XML format that you can load with OpenOffice. But, uh, excuse me? I don't hear you very well. Can I create templates from OpenOffice? I don't think you can at the moment. Uh, it's maybe something to look into because uh, I'm sure there is an equivalent functionality of uh, having the XML schema associated with the document and, and it should be possible, but uh, I, I'm not sure. Any other questions? So that's it.